This is the Information Brief. A Holyoke Media Service with the most recent updates of relevance in the city of Holyoke and the Pioneer Valley. I'm Johan Rashivega, and this is the information for Monday, May 18th of 2020. Governor Baker announces phase one of reopening. The administration also released a new Safer at Home advisory, which instructs residents to stay at home unless engaging with newly opened activities as a way to continue limiting the spread of COVID-19. A special election in Holyoke is taking place this Tuesday, May 19th. And we have the most recent numbers at the Holyoke Soldiers Home. This is the information. Governor Charlie Baker released this Monday, Reopening Massachusetts, the Reopening Advisory Board's report, which details a four-phase strategy to responsibly reopen businesses and activities while continuing to fight COVID-19. Starting this Monday, based on current public health data and trends, Massachusetts will begin phase one of a cautious reopening and workplaces that are permitted to open are required to follow new safety protocols and guidance. Based on the public health metrics, for phase one, the following sectors are permitted to reopen on May 18th. Manufacturing facilities, construction sites, and places of worship. Manufacturing facilities and construction sites will open effective this Monday with applicable guidelines. Places of worship will be able to open with guidelines that require physical distancing and encourage services to be held outdoors. Hospitals and community health centers that attest to specific public health and safety standards can begin to provide high-priority preventative care, pediatric care, and treatment for high-risk patients. Under a staggered approach, additional Phase 1 sectors of the economy will be permitted to open effective May 25th, including lab space, office space, limited personal services including hair salons, pet grooming, and car washes. As of retail, remote fulfillment and curbside pickup. Also permitted to open on May 25th with applicable guidelines are the following. Beaches, parks, driving movie theaters, select athletic fields and courts, many outdoor adventure activities, most fishing, hunting, and boating, and outdoor gardens, zoos, reserves, and public installations. As for the reopening Massachusetts in phases, the goal of this phase reopening plan is to methodically allow businesses, services, and activities to resume while avoiding a resurgence of COVID-19 that could overwhelm the state's healthcare system and erase the progress made so far. Each phase will last a minimum of three weeks and it will last longer before moving to the next phase. If public health data trends are negative, specific industries regions, and or the entire Commonwealth may need to return to an earlier phase. The Commonwealth will partner with industries to draft sector-specific protocols in advance of future phases. Example, restaurant-specific protocols will be drafted in advance of phase two. By working together to defeat COVID-19, it will be possible to proceed through each phase. Success in earlier phases will refine criteria for future phases, including travel, sizes of gatherings, as well as additional retail openings, lodging and accommodations, arts, entertainment, fitness centers, museums, restaurants, youth sports, and other activities. In regards of the industry-specific guidance, Businesses are not required to reopen and may not do so if they are unable to follow safety protocols. 
The state administration has developed specific guidance so that each industry reopens as safely as possible. Businesses are expected to implement these protocols in addition to the more general mandatory workplace safety standards. As of May 18th, materials for the sectors eligible to open in the first phase of reopening are included on the mass.gov slash reopening website. Guidance for sectors opening in later phases will be posted online in advance of those phases. In order to reopen, businesses must develop a written COVID-19 control plan outlining how its workplace will prevent the spread of COVID-19. Businesses operating to provide essential services may remain open and have until May 25th to comply with the general workplace safety standards as well as their industry sector-specific protocols. The links to the full report and additional information are included in our Facebook page with the posting of this information brief. Effective this Monday, May 18th, the Department of Public Health also updated the stay-at-home advisory, replacing it with a new safer-at-home advisory. The new safer-at-home advisory instructs everyone to stay home unless they are headed to a newly opened facility or activity. It also advises those over the age of 65 and those with underlying health conditions to stay home with the exception of trips required for healthcare, groceries, or that that are otherwise absolutely necessary. All residents must continue to wear a face covering in public when physical distancing is not possible, and individuals are advised to wash their hands frequently and be vigilant in monitoring for symptoms. Restrictions on gatherings of more than 10 people remain in effect. Remember that businesses may not allow to enter their premises and or may deny you service should you not comply with the facial covering order. This Tuesday, May 19th, is the special election for state senator. Being still in the middle of a health emergency, some changes have been made in order to keep safety, while voters can exercise their right on this day that was rescheduled from its original date of March 31st. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Most of the voting locations have a different setup, which was necessary in order to ensure the safety of poll workers and also the voters coming in. There will be blue lines on the floor at the check-in and check-out tables to ensure voters stand six feet apart. The flow of people will be directed in such a way that voters will enter through one door and exit through another. Voting booths are limited and will be separated six feet apart. Holyoke Police will only be allowing a few boarders in at a time, and also there will be a six-feet distance outside while waiting to enter the poll site. The use of small pencils will be implemented instead of the regular markers. Those pencils can be thrown away after being used for boarding. The boarding machines were tested using these pencils. All boarders coming into the polls should wear a facial covering. Two polling locations were voted by City Council to be relocated due to COVID-19 safety concerns. The polling locations are as follow. Ward 1, Prison A, Rosary Towers, Prison B, Holyoke City Hall. For Ward 2, Prison A, Morgan School Gym, Prison B, Falchetti Towers. Ward 3, Prison A and B will be at Metcalf School. Ward 4, Precinct A and Precinct B will be at St. Paul's Church Parish. Ward 5, Precinct A, McMahon School Gym, Precinct B, Donahue School Gym. Ward 6, Precinct A and B will be at Sullivan School. And Ward 7, Recent A and B will be at the E.N. White School. 
You can call the city clerk's office at 413-322-5520 if you have any questions or concerns. Once again, the polls for this Tuesday special election will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And regarding the Holyoke Soldiers Home, the numbers provided by the state as of this Monday are Testing results of all residents, 77 veteran residents have tested positive. 59 veteran residents have tested negative. Zero veteran residents have pending tests. Regarding the resident locations, 104 residents are on-site. 32 residents are off-site. Of those, 31 residents are at a dedicated skilled nursing unit at Holyoke Medical Center, and one resident is receiving acute care off-site. 88 veteran residents' deaths, 74 positive, 13 negative, one unknown. There has been no new deaths since our last update of Friday. And regarding the employees, 84 employees have tested positive. Stay in the know with Holyoke Media. We are reporting different announcements, services, and updates in the local, state, and federal level related to the COVID-19 emergency. The service is available in English and Spanish for our community in the city of Holyoke and the Pioneer Valley. This is the information we have for today. We will continue updating and following up as soon as more information becomes available. If you have questions or information to share with us as well as your concerns, you can contact us on our different outlets on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and podcast distribution platforms. Also, you can watch us on Holyoke Cable Channel 15. Remember to wash your hands frequently. Keep a safe distance if you need to be out and also remember to wear a facial covering or mask. This has been the Information Brief for May 18th, 2020. I'm Johan Rashivega. You're watching Holyoke Media.